Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. There's a few things you gotta know about the cord reel for your shop or garage. If you understand the differences, then you're gonna get the right cord reel for your needs. Hey, stick around and I'll show you what I mean. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Having a cord reel in your shop or maker space or out in your garage or even a tractor barn is really, really handy. It's a great way to be able to power up things that you need around the space for a little bit and then to handily stow away the cord afterwards without it being through the middle of the maker space or across the floor. But there's a few things you gotta know. A cord reel is not just a cord reel, is just not a cord reel. There are differences between them and like any other thing you purchase price point does make a difference you get what you pay for so some manufacturers will change different specifications varying gauges of the cordage itself uh, the components inside the durability of the case the mounting system all of these things make a difference over the long haul of whether you're gonna have something very durable or not. Other than case durability and the brackets, the main thing to look at is the capacity of the unit itself. And you'll find that usually printed right on the unit. So in this case, from this Watts wire 50 foot unit, it says it's got 14.3 wire, uh, heavy duty rated cord oil outside uh, rating, but look at right here, it's rated at 13 amps, 125 volts, 1625 watts. So remember 1625, then go to this cord reel here, and what you've got is 10 amps, 1250 watts. So this one's 1250, the other one was 1625. And for a little portable spool like this, which isn't really shop mounted, but is portable uh, cordage here where you plug in one in, you have some outlets. If you turn that around and look on the back, it's also rated right here, 10 amps, 125 volts, 1250 watts. Now, something that's very important to keep in mind, that's the total deliverable capacity of this unit. You don't get any more than that coming through it. And if that's exceeding what the plug-in, where it's being plugged into the receptacle, you don't just magically get more power. That's the combined amount. So if you have a triple tap on this or a plug strip or something like that, then you're not gonna be able to get that much power out of each of these outlets you'll get that much combined, all right? And that's very important to know. So you need to keep in mind how you're going to be using this cord. Are you gonna be using it to run, let's say a portable table saw, but there's also a little miter saw or router table, or perhaps there's an air compressor in your uh, garage or something like that, a little inflator. And you need to look at the total amount, including lighting and that sort of thing you may put on this to figure out whether or not uh, you have enough capacity. My recommendation, like extension cords, is to always buy the best unit you can buy. Now we got this unit, it compliments of our friends at Watts Wire, after we had a little bit of a problem here in the shop. You may recall, if you've seen this episode, where we were reviewing a portable heater from New Air and it was plugged in during the winter hours. After filming had stopped over the day of filming, we uh, actually used it the following day. I was here in the shop, had it plugged in, and I started to hear some arcing, started smelling electrical, and thought, where is this happening? And I happened to look up at this cord reel that was up on the ceiling, uh, or up under the, the main uh, utility spine down the center of our shop here and we had this unit plugged into it right here that was providing some nice convenient uh, warm air right here while I was working in the winter here. Well, here's the problem, and this is why you need to know what you're gonna be plugging into it. Notice we said right here, this was 10 amps, 1250 watts. Look what this is drawing over here. If you look right there, it is drawing 1500 watts, 250 watts more than what this was able to deliver. Now, what was the result? Well, over a period of time, 
resistance built up in this. We're just drawing, drawing, drawing through this right here. And what happened is you end up with the contacts. This is the way the contacts looked at beforehand. Look at this where it arced out and it melted into the plastic here. We're getting smoke and electrical shorts starting to happen. I'm glad we unplugged it when we did. That could have been a little bit of a problem. Probably wouldn't have turned in disaster because it's in metal right here and probably would have shorted out eventually and shut off the breaker. But there's two things to learn here. Number one, don't exceed the amount of power coming out of this. And number two is look for a unit that has a trip breaker on it. If you notice over on this unit, um, it's going to actually have a built-in trip breaker that you can see mentioned on the packaging itself right here. Built-in 13 amp circuit breaker. So if you exceed that amount or there's some kind of overdraw, it's going to shut down so as to protect the unit and to stop the unit or the tool that you're using from being underpowered. This gives you a clue how a cord reel works. This cord reel is around a, sp uh, a spring loaded drum that has been released when we took the cover off, but that's what gives you the ability to feed the cord back in and kind of ratchet it in and let the cord stay instead of going all back in at one time. But this gives you an idea of what's happening. You have this outer conductor ring here where the incoming power right here where it melted would be touching on that ring. Then you have the transfer terminals that are on the center, which run to the terminal inside the hub. Therefore, there's continuous power being delivered across, even though this is being turned or is in different positions, you'll always have continuity through these two rings here. So that's how a reel works. Now, let's also look at cord capacity. Something you need to know that is when you put coiled cord like this, you actually drop its deliverable load. If you look at the cordage that came supplied with this unit, really nice cordage, heavy duty rating on the jacket itself. But if you took about 50 foot of this, about 15 meters, uh, the deliverable amperage on this is about 15 amps. So why is it when you look down here, it says only 13 amps? That's because the wire is coiled inside it at any given time, depending on how much is deployed. So the unit needs to be rated for less for resistance that occurs when you tightly coil. Now you can have a uh, wire coiled like this inside and it'll work just fine as long as you're not drawing the maximum amount continuously through it, it'll tend to heat up. But they also reduce the deliverable rating uh, by a couple amps on this just because of the fact that it's coiled. We think this uh, this unit right here for Watts Wire is one of the best that we've seen for the price point. You can check it out in the description below. But there's a couple features on this that I really like. One, I like the length of the plug-in tail right here. So that gives you some options when you mount this to get to um, a permanently wired outlet around there or to run one to it without being short cabled like if you just had a little baby stub on this. The other thing I really like about this unit is the hardware setup. That mounting bracket is really heavy duty. And here is a mounting plate that comes with it that allows you to mount this on the ceiling or the wall and then to slide this into it like that so that it can be hung like that, but it can be removed out as well. And then this can be transported elsewhere should you need to do so. That is a really nice feature. The other thing I really like about this is look at the hardware that they provided. This is really nice quality hardware, heavy duty screws for the mounting bracket. And for those of you that are gonna put it into concrete or a grouted uh, concrete block wall, some really nice anchors. So they did a nice job, uh, these wedge anchors. So the hardware is high quality as well. Comes with a, a little basic um, instruction sheet here, uh, just really nicely done. All right, let's go ahead and get this mounted and put it to work. Here we go.
We've got it all installed. We've adjusted the stopper or the bumper on it. Uh, and so this is gonna be really handy on the table here. By all looks, we're gonna be very pleased with this cord reel. Now there's several cord reels out in the marketplace uh, beyond the Watts wire one. If you're interested in the Watts wire one, there is a link for it in the description below. But you might also check out Snap-on's unit, which actually has a trouble light on the end of it and an outlet. So if your shop is more related to mechanicing, someplace you need to get light down in an engine bay or that sort of thing, the Snap-on might be a good one for you to take a look at. Also, if you need a maker space area cord, but it's heavier duty, let's say a 12 gauge versus 14, like the Watts wire one we just used as a sample, check out the link below. Rockler actually offers two or three different models, 12 gauge, different lengths. Looks like it's a good unit. Uh, there's several great ratings on it, so that might be something you check out as well. If you have a brand or some insights that you'd like to offer to your fellow viewer family members, feel free to do so in the comments below. We read every one of them, and so we have glad to respond. Thank you for your insights. Here's something you might want to take a look at. Here's an episode we did earlier on comparing different kinds of extension cords, what their different capacities are, and what those jackets are all about on the outside, all those different letters that are used there. You can look at those to figure out how to get the best cord for the money. And while you're at it, check out this other video out of our catalog of past episodes that YouTube thinks is perfect for you and we bet you're gonna like it as well. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from Dirt Farmer Jay, really enjoying this new cord reel next to my work table.